My name is Filippo Menolascina. I'm a Chancellor's Fellow here in the Institute for, for Bioengineering. And what I wanted to uh, share with you today are some of the most uh, exciting, what we believe are some of the most exciting results uh, we have obtained towards the uh, engineering of what is going to be the next generation of robots. Now, as um, pretty much as any of the robots you can think about, the ones that we deal with are actually uh, designed to accomplish a specific task. Uh, for example, to identify objects in the world around them and to selectively interact with them. But unlike most, I would say, all of the robots you can think about, these ones have a very peculiar property. They are alive. So what we uh, actually specialize in, uh, what my group specializes in, is in the design of new forms of life, in reprogramming life, in reprogramming cells to accomplish new functions and to give these cells new functions, okay? Now, the, um, what, how the, the way we do this is to actually combine principles from engineering, mainly from control engineering, uh, with principles from biology, synthetic biology, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this in a second, uh, to develop new cells, cells that can accomplish, uh, for example, identification, the identification of cancer cells crawling in our body and uh, basically classifying cells as they, uh, uh, they find them and killing them selectively. Now, this is what um, this is one of the holy grails of uh, biomedical sciences, uh, and the way we're gonna uh, do this is by basically leveraging on the results that we have obtained so far in a very well established uh, uh, field that is control. If we want to, to build these uh, living robots, we have to be able to show that we can control life. And this is actually what I did over the first uh, I would say the first few uh, years of my academic career. Uh, I'm a control engineer by training, and uh, these are the types of systems I was working with, uh, mostly mechanical systems, electromechanical systems. Now, if we, want that, if we want to show that we can control life, what we have to do is to basically select these two things. We have to identify a system that we want to control, a, a biological system, a living system, and we, went, we, we have to design a control algorithm around it. So what I did uh, was exactly this. Um, I basically took uh, a model system, I'm gonna talk about this in a second, and uh, I identified a controlled variable, basically one of the many uh, genes in that system, and I built a controller that was forcing this controlled variable to display a desired behavior. Now the principle behind this, behind this work, is actually very, very easy. What we do is to feed back this information, so the information about what we want that system to do, and compare it dynamically with what the, what, so actually, this is uh, what the system is doing, and comparing it with the desired output, with what the si we want the system to do, okay? This error, now this is the divergence between uh, the actual behavior of the system and what we want the system to do, uh, we feed this uh, signal to a controller. This is just an algorithm that we designed. Uh, and this controller would then force the system so that it always displays uh, the ISR behavior, okay? Now, this is all nice and simple, uh, most of the time for electromechanical systems. It is, it is much, much more complicated for biological ones. And uh, if you actually want to do this, you have to select, you have to start from the very basics. So you have to select the test beds. So what I did uh, for my PhD was in doing exactly this. The test bed in this case must be cells, and these cells have to have some, uh, some variable that we want to control. In this case, these were yeast cells. This is the baker's yeast. This is the yeast that is used to make beer or, or to make bread. Uh, now, the interesting thing in these, in these cells uh, was that uh, we could provide them with glucose or galactose, two sugars, these are the sugars that you uh, normally add in, uh, in, your, in your coffee in the morning. Uh, and we can make, it, make them actually light up in green uh, whenever they are, for example, exposed to galactose. Okay, so now we have a control variable, the amount of uh, uh, fluorescence, the, the, the signal that we can estimate from them. And we also have a way to control this variable, administering other glucose or galactose, okay? So what, what I did during my PhD was actually to derive mathematical models. This is basically the usual way engineers work, right? So we, we have uh, a representation of the system we want to, uh, to study, 
And around these two uh, mathematical models, I basically developed uh, a control algorithm. And this control algorithm, you can actually see, doesn't differ too much from what I showed before, from the general framework. These are feedback control. What I'm doing is to basically estimating at, at uh, regular time intervals the, uh, the GFP, so the, uh, the amount of fluorescence these cells are producing, and I'm immediately feeding this back to the reference value, so to, so to, to what the uh, GFP in those cells I want uh, the cells to, to express. Um, so by implementing this uh, in a, a real world uh, system, I actually demonstrated that you can, you can obtain this. There is one step that is missing here, is how do we actually go about proving this in vivo, proving this in actual cells. And it's very, very complicated to do this uh, with single cells. Uh, it's actually extremely challenging. Uh, because you cannot easily control the amount of uh, sugars, for example, the, the concentration of sugars that they, they, they see uh, in their culture. Uh, this is mostly for technological reasons that were mostly overcome by uh, devices, the micro devices we have heard about uh, toward the, the start of this, uh, uh, of this session. Uh, in these devices, we are able to mechanically trap individual cells, observe them, while we expose them to the input that we are computing uh, for them to minimize the discrepancy between what, we are, what they are doing and what we want them to do. Okay? So I used macrofluidics to basically allow uh, getting insight into the dynamics of the cells. And uh, by combining these uh, microfluidic devices in a closed loop platform, I basically uh, implemented a closed loop control uh, uh, system that was able to uh, basically image cells using standard fluorescence microscopy. This is a very standard uh, technique in biology. And uh, so the microscope was taking images of the cells, uh, encapsulated, uh, uh, trapped in, in this microfluidic device, and was passing this information to the computer that at regular time intervals was basically computing which sugar to expose the cells to in order to uh, minimize that error, the discrepancy between the desired output and the actual one. Uh, now, this is the uh, experimental platform that I use. These are the actual uh, these, these are, these are the actual experiments. So, this is the amount of fluorescence we want the cells to express as a function of time. Time is going uh, is going by, and these are the actual cells. Now, you can see these uh, white dots are individual cells, individual cells nuclei, and you can see that the estimated so the actual quantifiable uh, amount of fluorescence in each cell in uh, uh, in, in the average population. Uh, of the, of the cells is actually following pretty closely the blue signal. This is the other desired output. Okay, and this is basically happening by automatically letting the uh, the, the computer deciding how to stimulate the cells. Okay, this plot basically was the first proof of the fact that you can control life using control engineering principles in the field. Now, the, the field of control engineering is uh, 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 is. I would say overwhelmed with uh, this kind of research, and there are lots of new avenues that are being explored in these uh, in this context. To, for example, force pathological cells to actually revert back to a physiological state. Okay, and uh, that brings us to the to the last question uh, that I have uh, for for this talk, which is, what's next? How do we take advantage of uh, these results? The ability to engineer cells and, and proactively steer the behavior uh, in real time. Well, one of the avenues, the research avenues that we are exploring with a, a collaborator at Columbia, Caldanino, is actually to develop the next generation of therapies, of drugs. Uh, now, this is a pill. Uh, this is uh, one of the standard pills that uh, uh, from, from now and then we, we, we take to treat specific diseases. And in this very moment, these pills are very, very often, I would say uh, all the time, uh, chemicals. In the future, it's very likely that in those granules, you will actually have, for example, bacteria or other types of cells that you will ingest, and this bacteria will be programmed to accomplish a specific task in your body. For example, crawling your body, again, and identifying cancer cells and killing them. And this is actually what we are exploring with Tau. Uh, we are basically engineering uh, E. coli to actually sense tumors specifically and delivering and to and deliver uh, uh, cytotoxic compounds right on the tumor. Basically, the, this is how a, a typical experiment would look like. These are bacteria. When they sense the tumor, they just like shine 
uh, light, or in this case, they actually deliver a chemical to the tumor, and they will, they are, that, that, tube, that, that chemical is actually meant to kill the tumor. And um, this is basically going to increase substantially the type of uh, the efficiency of the uh, anti-cancer therapies that we uh, have so far. It basically relies on the systemic administration of a super potent uh, poison, this is a chemo chemotherapeutic agent, uh, that acts, of course, systemically and stays in the body for, for a long time, but fails to actually uh, uh, locate towards where it is needed, which is the tumor. This is a very common picture for uh, cancer chemotherapy. So we, we hope to actually change this picture uh, 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 going towards a much better uh, uh, configuration of the therapy itself. Um, the way we are, we are planning to do this is to actually combine uh, combining uh, technological aspects. Uh, we use Necrophilix uh, 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 extensively to actually test these uh, ideas. And in particular, we are building these new uh, devices that are called organs on chip. Uh, they are basically devices, micro devices, on the uh, 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 diameter of uh, one of your hair uh, uh, in, in width, in which you can actually see mammalian cells and you can make mammalian cells interact, so cells in your body and if you can make them interact with, uh, uh, with bacteria, that will accomplish some, one of those tasks I was talking about in, in just a few, few seconds ago. So these are the kinds of, of research that we are currently uh, uh, exploiting. And these are, uh, uh, this is just my last slide, my acknowledgement slides. Uh, part of this work was carried out while I was still uh, in Italy and part uh, at MIT. Uh, these are the people I'd like to thank for that and thank you all for your attention. This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh.